Well, well, what has the cat dragged in today? It's a video tutorial on stealth games. So in the previous video, we got our test scene set up. So we've got our player character here, um, this female character. Uh, we have our enemy. We have our goal. We have a wall in the center here for testing visibility and plenty of space for me to walk around and test navigation with the player character and the chase behavior of the enemy. That's all we need for test level. Nice, simple, easy to test everything that we want to test. And we're not going to do anything with that whatsoever in this video because we're going to focus on getting our animation set up. These characters do not animate. If I was to hit the play button, take a look at the game scene, it's like the chicken is already set up with an idle animation, but that's the chicken. The characters have no animation to them. Even if we had movement code hooked up to them, they wouldn't animate. And that's just going to look odd. So let's get some animation set up. Now, when talking about animations in Unity, it is important to keep in mind the difference between animations and the animation window and animator controllers and the animator window, which is why I say those two words a little bit funny. I stress the tor and shun portions of the words because honestly, it can get a little bit confusing in Unity because you place animations inside the animator to control them. And you use the animate tour window to set up an animate tour controller, but you use the animation window to modify the animations that go in the animate tour. Yeah, it's, it's a mess. Um, I don't, I'm not sure they could have chosen any better words, to be honest, but yeah, it's a bit of a mess. That's why I have that odd inflection, so that way you always know which one I'm talking about. So I'm going to go into my animate tour folder here that I created in assets. And I am going to create an animator controller. So I am going to, inside this folder, right click, create. And where is it? I'm suddenly gone blind. There it is, animator controller. And I'm going to call this the basic animator controller. And then I'm going to double click on it, which should auto open the animate tour window. Now, if you don't already have the animate tour window open and you double click on it, it should automatically open it up. You can also go to window, animation, and then animate tour. That will also open up the window. Now, this is a really powerful tool. It can actually be used for a heck of a lot more than controlling your animations. We're just going to be using it in its most basic way possible for this particular tutorial. But I want to stress that this is a full powered state machine. And if you're willing to dig in and do some coding, it's a pretty gosh darn useful tool for a lot of things beyond animations. Okay, let's do what's called a blend tree. So we're going to want to have our characters with three animations. We're going to want the character to have a run forward, a run backward, and an idle animation. And we want the system to seamlessly blend between those three animations. In Unity, that is called a blend tree. So what I'm going to do in the animate tour window, I am going to right click and I am going to create a state and I am going to create from a new blend tree. This will automatically link the blend tree to the entry state. So entry will always be called when the state machine starts up. 
it will auto transition into the blend tree and the blend tree is where we're going to do our heavy lifting. So I'm going to double click on the blend tree node to go in to be able to modify it. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change this parameter name. When we created the blend tree, it automatically created a parameter called blend. I am going to rename this by, well, first let me sh talk through that instead of just randomly clicking. I'm going to left click to select it, and then I'm going to click it again to go into rename. F2, by the way, does not work here for some reason. It works in almost every other spot. So like if I select main camera and hit F2, it takes me into rename. But for whatever reason, I don't know if you can hear me hitting the keyboard there. Uh, F2 does not work here. So I just have to click again. And I am going to rename this to move speed. The next thing that we need to do is we need to add in some motions. So at the moment, uh, we have a motion, list is empty. We're gonna want to add in three things here. So I'm gonna click on the plus sign, one, motion, add new motion field, add new motion field, add motion field. So now I have three fields. And what I need to do is I need to put motions or animations into these slots. Now for that, we're off to the Kevin folder and basic motions, animations, and we're gonna need to go into idles and movements. I'm gonna go into idles first and I am going to expand this basic motions at idle zero one because what I want is this little triangle symbol right here, basic motions at idle with the little triangle symbol. That is what I need. So I'm gonna select my blend tree again, so that way I see it in the inspector. And I am going to drag this into the middle box. Don't fret if you uh, misdragged it because you can click and drag and rearrange the position of these motions. Next, I'm gonna go back to the animations folder and I'm going to go into movement. Now, what I want is I want the run zero one. I do not want the RM version. That stands for root motion. Discussing that is quite beyond the scope of this video. Root motion animation is a very powerful animation tool, but we're not dealing with that right now. So I want the run zero one. I'm going to expand it. And it's got the two motions that I want forwards and backwards. So once again, select my blend tree because I I'm selected it. I am going to drag forwards into the last slot and backwards into the first slot. It's a reason for this madness. Now what I want to do is I want to uncheck automate thresholds because at the moment automating thresholds is saying, okay, well, I'm going to go from zero to one for the move speed property with zero being backwards and one being forwards. I want this to go from minus one to one because that's what we're going to get from the axis input system, right? When I say input dot get axis vertical, which is bound to W and S, that's gonna give me a range of one, W or forward is being pressed, and negative one, S or backwards is being pressed. So I'm going to uncheck automate thresholds. And I'm gonna come in here and manually type in the numbers minus one. Oops, I no, not you, I want to, I want to leave my animation speed alone. Uh, zero and one. Now I can test this by hitting and actually dragging this up a little bit and doing a left click drag, right click, 
uh, to rotate, left click to pan. And position this so I can see my little uh, default mannequin guy here. And I can hit the run button. And what I can do is I can take this move speed uh, slider here, slide it back to negative one, slide it forward to one, slide it back down to zero, and you should see a gradual adjustment from blending from the idle to running backwards or blending into running forwards. And that's it. That's setting up an animation controller. All right, that, sorry, wrong word. That is setting up an animator controller. Got to use the right words for the right thing. Now, there's obviously a lot more that you can do with blend trees. Currently, we're using what's called a one-dimensional blend tree. In other words, we're blending across a single parameter. Uh, you can do two-dimensional blend trees, three different varieties, which would basically allow you to, well, do both um, forward and lateral movements and get far more complicated, which we're not going to do here. What we have will work just fine. Now, to ensure that this is going to work, I am going to select my character female, which while I'm at it, you know what, let's go ahead and rename this. I'm going to rename this to player. And then on the animator component, you notice that there is no controller here. I'm going to click on the picker and it is the basic animator controller is what we created. I'll drop that in there. I'll select the male character, change that to enemy and select the picker basic animator controller and yep i can see both characters from my game view so hit the play button and now both of them are playing their idle animation And of course, the chicken already has his controller. And just to take a quick look at the chicken controller, we can see here that it's set up to be on idle and uh, has transitions established for walking, running, and eating, but we're not going to get into that. I just wanted to show what a more complicated animator controller might look like with transitions out of the idle into different individual animations and then transitions back into it. This is not using a blend tree. This is just using it as a state machine. The chicken's already all nice and set up, so we really don't have to worry about it. And that would be it for this video with our animator controller set up and ready to go. I'll go ahead and save my scene to save the changes that I made to the enemy and the player. And so in the next video, we will take a look at getting the character controller, such as it will be, uh, for the player all nice and set up. As always, if you like this video, a thumbs up would be appreciated. And if not, well, the thumbs down button is right next to it. Until the next video.